Allahi wa barakatu Juma Karim Welcome to An-Nashid My name is Abdurazak Ingutia And I have one question for you But first, you know, I missed you so much I've not seen you for a very long time I don't even know how you celebrated your Eid I don't know how you spent the entire week I think I was with you here last week uh, <laughs> You just missed me maybe because you didn't see me for two days yeah. <laughs> and uh, we celebrated. My Eid was so much fun. I prayed on Tuesday. MashaAllah. <laughs> and okay. I was invited over to my cousin's place. Uh -huh. So I really enjoyed it, Alhamdulillah. But I think you should remind them your beautiful name. Fatma. My you name should. is Fatma, by the way. <laughs> and uh, you're watching on the shit. I love hearing that name. Anyway, I missed you so much. And I, I, I just missed you so much. I, I don't know if I should go on and say that but it's okay i prayed my aid on wednesday and it was really fantastic and it was just so awesome i prayed on on, on wednesday mm -hmm. and the weather was just fantastic people were saying it's so cold but i think that's the best weather ever because the sunshine was not there it was just it was just an overcast day and the weather was really fantastic we I just wish that one day all the Muslims all over the world will all pray in one day and not a few people praying on Tuesday yeah. and others on Wednesday. So I hope inshallah next time we'll all pray the same day without confusion. I, I also, you've just reminded me what Sheikh Hassan said. Sheikh mm. Salaamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Salaam. <laughs> We've actually <laughs> left you to tell the Hassan, conversation, no problem. but it's okay. So the, the other time when you said that it will be good if Muslims just sacrifice this one day yes. and pray all of them across the entire mm. world on that similar day. Yes. I think it would unite us more than we are right now mm. because Dwajua, uh, Muslims can be, or anyone who knows something or who thinks they know something, they mm. can be very argumentative mm. uh, and it can be divisive because I know, you know, but we know differently mm. and we want to do something. We want to do it at the same time. Right. I do it my way, you go your way. And it yeah. divides us. Uh, you mm. have a point, Fatma, there. Mm, I, I think uh, but Fatma's wish, unfortunately, uh, cannot happen for either. Uh -huh. It cannot happen for it. And for best reason is that uh, but as we look at the world, the world is around. As we speak now, my brother, it's uh, around uh, five something in Kenya, or mm. and let me just quote 17 hours so that we go GMT way. Mm -hmm. There's someone who is 001, 002, 003 till we get to 17 hours. Yeah. So it, it, it cannot be possible for all of us to pray together in the entire world. What she can say uh -huh. in the region, uh -huh. because the so crescent is uh, s cited in the region. Uh -huh. So in region, we can agree. And we agreed many years back, almost 1985, we all agreed that we'll be praying one day. Unfortunately, there are people who don't listen to fatwas and the rest, and that's why they make confusion. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah, Sheikh, when I say we all pray at the same day, I mean like we all pray, like uh, we have Monday here in mm -hmm. Africa, we mm -hmm. also have Monday on ch in America. Yes. So when I say we pray all the same day, I mean like it's on the Monday, fast. all of us. You're talking of uh, all yeah. praying in oh, like, yeah. like yes. so dead five. So pray on Monday, yeah. no yes. where you are. That's true. Yeah. That's very true. Thank I, you. I, I think that's one more thing that we should really get to talk about mm. because uh, yeah, you know, people prayed on on Tuesday. Those who the, those who prayed on Tuesday, and now it emerges that Saudi Arabia says they misled people, and they're going to pay for that. And they would like all those people who broke their fast on Tuesday yes. to add an extra day on top mm. of that in, in order to compensate for it. Yes, you know one thing I, I must uh, uh, advise people is that uh, every year I thank Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala I go for Hajj, and that's why I thank KBC and especially the one setting uh, the uh, the studio today because behind me has put uh, the best place Madina Tul Munawwara. Yeah, for those who don't know, the photo there is the, the photo of uh, Masjid Al Nabawi, the, the 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 mosque of our Prophet Muhammad peace, peace be, upon be upon him, him. one of the best places in this world to be. And uh, when I go to Medina, eh, eh, wallahi, that's an that's, that's amazing picture of that mosque. And where you see the green, that's where the Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him, was buried down there. Uh, that's where the Prophet Muhammad was buried. And I pray for every person uh, watching today to one day visit that place and you'll realize the best place to be in this world. Now, uh, proceeding to what you have asked me, is that uh, every year I go for Hajj, I buy a diary. You buy a diary? Diary. What for? Saudi diary. Uh -huh. 
And by the time I buy Saudi Dari when I go for Hajj this year, inshallah, it will show me when it will be next year. Are you getting me? Carry on, carry on. I, I, I explained, and you know, I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because I visited almost seven media houses yeah. before it, seven, don't mention them, and one, one of them was this one. And they asked me, Sheikh, what do you say about uh, Eid Day? When do people uh, celebrate Eid? I told them, we don't know. We'll wait for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say. Mm -hmm. What about public holiday? I told them uh, uh, the chief Kadi was very, very right for setting uh, the public holiday to be on Wednesday because of history of where sheikhs visited uh, our grandfather, uh, the first president of this country, Mze Jomo Kenyatta. Mm -hmm. And he, they asked him, can you allow us to have public holiday on Eid Day? He said, it's okay. Give me the date. They couldn't agree. Right. So they told him we'll be waiting for the moon to be sighted. Kenyatta told them that you cannot wait for the moon to be sighted because the government doesn't work that way. You know, in fact, <laughs> Kenyatta used Wachenu Swahili. <laughs> you know, he didn't understand. Yeah. So, uh, Marhum, a Sheikh uh, Swahili Farisi, Rahim told Allah. Kenyatta yeah. when it is sighted in Saudi, we also do it here. What he was trying to, to do, he was trying to guide Kenyatta to know that uh, Eid is celebrated all over the world. Uh -huh. But his words were misinterpreted by many people. The ones who are there now started saying that every time it is cited in Saudi, we will also assume we have cited it, mm -hmm. which is not true. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thank Saudi scholars. Uh, whom I have, I, I meet every year I go for Hajj. I make, I make sure I meet these scholars almost every year, and they have always told us, please don't follow our moon sighting. Uh -huh. Even this year, they have said in many media houses that we were wrong in sighting the moon because it was not possible to sight the moon on Monday. So they have said that their people will not pay, mm -hmm. but they will pay for them fidya. But they said we'll only pay for now in Saudi citizens because. We are responsible for our citizens. They are under their territory. You are all leaders and responsible for the people who are under you. So all those people who, who followed Saudi, then they should know what to do. So what I'm trying to say is that um, uh, it, was, uh, it was good if we could at least try to search for our moon in Kenya. If we don't see it, then we do what the Prophet Muhammad Sassam told so us. Well, that. First, when you... You start fasting Ramadan when you see the crescent. Uh -huh. And you break the fast when you sight the crescent. He didn't stop there. I like the Prophet Muhammad so, 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 so much. I'm ready to die for him. He said that for in Huma alaykum, if there are clouds, he knew there are uh, countries in the world where there are many clouds. For in Huma alaykum, if there are clouds, for Akmilu Thalathin, complete 30 days. And that is what some of us did. We are not saying you are wrong, Fatma, you are right, <laughs> and many people are right, but you must know that 90% of the world break the fast on Wednesday. 90%, so it's on record. What about those people who maybe uh, prayed Eid on Tuesday and they fasted for 29 days? Yeah, for those who fast for 29 days, at least they are a little bit okay because Ramadan can be 29 or 30 days, but for all those who fast for 28 days, they must complete one day. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me answer it that so that you be happy. You know you want to be happy today. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think it, they would have to fast that one extra day because the, the months in the Islamic calendar mm -hmm. they're either twenty nine or thirty days long. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to know who sights the moon in Kenya. Uh, this is a good question, uh, Brother Abdul Razak. Uh, for many years, for almost ten years. I have been serving as one of the representatives of Moon Sighting Committee in Kenya, and the committee has almost seven scholars, mm -hmm. and among them is Sharif Hussein, among them is uh, Ustad Mohammed Shebwana, mm -hmm. and the other people in, uh, and by that time when Professor Al Busaidi was in Nairobi, he was also part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, what happens is that in 47 counties, before it was districts, but now let's talk of 47 counties, uh -huh. as soon as the, uh, the constitution was promulgated, the 47 counties, there was appointed in each county one person by the chief Kadi. Uh -huh. And many times it's either, if there's a Kadi in that place, it's a Kadi of not Kadi uh, an Imam. So what happens is that if someone cites the crescent in Embu, then the person, any person, should go now to the Imam of Embu Mosque 
the imam of Embomos should call the chief cadi directly because they are hotlines. Anyone who who cite it in Kisumu, because Kisumu there is a cadi, yeah. should not go to the imam mm -hmm. but to the cadi. Uh -huh. But because the cadi is in central uh, Kisumu, he should go to the to the mosque nearby. Uh -huh. So the imams have the names of the cadis mm -hmm. and numbers. Mm -hmm. So the cadi will call the chief cadi, and that's how the chief cadi now announces the moon. Not that is the only one who cite the moon. Uh -huh. It's a committee which transmits the information to the cadi, then the cadi now announces it. That's what happens, and it's a very good, effective process. I, I think for the benefit of the viewer here, yes. we can talk about uh, who can be trusted when they cite the moon, because Saudi Arabia have have apologized for this, mm. and so it will be very important for us to, to give the criteria of who should uh, be trusted when they say they have seen the crescent. Okay, let, let me explain this way. I know your, uh, your question is philosophical. Uh, when you talk of who, I know it might mean which country, and then uh, it might mean a person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. An individual who should cite a moon is a Muslim. Uh -huh. So a non-Muslim cannot cite the moon on our behalf. Uh -huh. If a non-Muslim cite the moon, because they can, yeah. but you see it's not their business. Mm -hmm. So they, 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 them, they just wait for us to tell them. But if there's a non-Muslim who can cite it, mm -hmm. then he should call a Muslim nearby. To see hey, Abdul Razak, come. The moon is there. Uh -huh. Because we are the ones who also have the moon, mm -hmm. the dua for the moon. Because when you cite the moon, there's a dua you, you, you make, la la la, la la la, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. Mm -hmm. Then after you have you, you have uh, cited the moon, you must get at least a witness. Uh -huh. You know, you cannot say, I cited alone. Where were you? I was in the <laughs> forest. Where were you? Maybe you're taking mira or alcohol. <laughs> you must have another person and say that me. you are two. Yeah. So then when you are, you are two now, you are Muslims, and you must be fasting Muslims. Uh -huh. So a drunkard cannot tell us that he, they have cited the moon. Uh -huh. How can you cite the moon when you are drunkard? What are you doing? Because it is the people who fast who try to cite there. So crescent. Let's call it the crescent. the crescent. So it should be a Muslim, Bali, if possible, Bali, uh -huh. and someone who has good eyesight. Mm -hmm. That's why in the mosque, every time I talk about the crescent, I always single out them this there and tell them, you cannot see it, all of you. <laughs> and some of them say, what's the problem? I tell them, because yeah. so it should pass someone who is sound, mm -hmm. eyesight, uh, sound, and who is Bali. Why is it that... Uh, Maybe as I process this thought, you can go on and also uh, add on to that. So let me ask you something. You said that you're supposed to fast when you sight the moon. Yes. So let's say, for example, uh, people at the coast, mm. maybe uh, they happen to see the moon before us in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. So if they see the moon, will you have to start with them or should you wait until we see the moon in Nairobi? We will fast with them as long as it is sighted in your region. Mm -hmm. Our region is Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, Zanzibar. Mm -hmm. That's a one region. Okay. Which wherever it is seen in any of those regions, we must fast. Okay. Yes. How is the sighting done? Do they use uh, things like a telescope or you just look at it with your naked eye? It's not allowed to use telescope. Uh -huh. Some countries use telescope. Mm -hmm. I don't want to mention the countries, they know themselves. Yeah. Those countries which always bring us problems. They sight with the, if they don't see it with their eyes. They say, Allah Muhammad, <laughs> Allah telescope. Then they, they use a telescope. Now, yeah. you don't use telescope. Because if you use telescope, that is invasion. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said that, Kullu bid'atin dhalala wa kullu dhalalatin fi nar. Anything which is an innovation in religion, in religion, mm -hmm. is an innovation and it is in nar. So, you can't cite the crescent with telescope. And that's why the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, if you don't see it by anything, yeah. you just have to wait for 30 days. What's one day? Just add one day. I mean, if I had 30 complete days. I mean, I, yeah. yeah. Before I forget, you know, I mentioned about the issue of the diary. Uh -huh. So you see Saudi, because it's a government, it's a kingdom, uh -huh. they have to make their diary. And not only Saudi Arabia. Iran, they make it. Uh, Syria, they mm -hmm. make it. Iraq, they make it. Yemen, they make it. Because they must have a calendar. Yeah. So for them, it is easier to, be, to pay Fidia mm -hmm. than to alter the calendar. You know, Kenyatta asked those people that day, yeah. do you mean that if, for example, I, President Kenyatta, have a meeting with people, uh -huh. then you come tell me, Idi Meonekana, tomorrow I tell them you cannot come. He said you can't do that. So we must know in advance. And that's why it was agreed in that meeting uh -huh. where uh, uh, Sheikh Swal Faris was there, and even my grandfather, Sheikh Muhammad Wamonyo, who is still alive, was there. Yeah, sure in fact, he's the one who was advising me. Uh -huh. He told them, why don't you give me 
to always make Eid holiday on 31st of Ramadan. 31st of Ramadan. Do we have 31st in any Islamic calendar? There is no 31st. There is no. That's why we agreed it's okay. Then let the public holiday always be on the 31st of Ramadan, uh -huh. meaning that if Ramadan will be 29, then we Muslims will celebrate on that 30th, the 30th, eh? uh -huh. Me meaning it's one or one first of Shawwal. Yeah. Then the next day we'll have public holiday with everyone in Kenya yeah. because we want even Christians to celebrate with us. Mm. I invited almost 12 professors to my house. Alhamdulillah, they were so happy to see how we eat, how we sit down. Mm -hmm. You see, that's why we need these things. You remember even our governor, Mike Bovisonko, yeah. also had a very big iftar for many people uh, there because we now want Muslims and Christians to be there. Mm -hmm. You get me now. Uh -huh. That's why it is always on 31st. So what I'm trying to say is that no one in this country should ever abuse the chief Kadi for announcing public holiday on that day. Uh -huh. For the issue of citing, let us leave it uh, for anyone, but uh, public holiday is known. So for Kenyans, you must know that. And that's why the government of Kenya, we thank the government so much. We thank the president, Uhuru Moigai Kenyatta, and everyone in government for gazetting that day. And we pray that it continue till the day of judgment. Mm -hmm. But it should always be on 31st of Ramadan, meaning that there's no 31st. So we are so sure that it will be Ramadan. Uh -huh. It will be Eid, first of Shawwal. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, inshallah, next time all Muslim, we shall follow the Chef Kadi. Whatever he's saying, we shall do. <laughs> and not uh, come on with our own assumptions. Yeah, it's, it's important. It's important. Mm. I, I think it also teaches us a lesson that um, we should not be on the forefront of following controversy. That's because true. That's some true. people will say, Nini wa Islamu ambao mnafungua siku enya msima Chef Kadi. They call you... Uh, Nyinyi mnaswali idi ya chief kadhi mm. <laughs> or they say oh nyinyi ni wale wa chief kadhi yes. mm. and and you know it it feels like there is also a sense of belonging when you feel like you are opposing something that other people are mm. opposing yet you do not know why they are opposing it mm. and it might vilify some people and and you think that you're part of a team that's right but it's actually wrong mm. so i think it will it also teaches us a lesson of Seeking knowledge before getting into our own decisions. Mm. You know, Abdul Razak, uh, and this has been my advice, and I continue with this advice. Uh, I advise all Kenyans, and especially the youth. You know, Christians are controlled. I work with Christians, and I thank, I, I'm, I'm telling you, I highly appreciate Christians. Uh -huh. I work in Christian universities. I've been teaching in Catholic University for many years, St. Paul University for many years. Uh, I, I taught in Adventist University for many years. I know them. These people have orders. You cannot just, especially I'm talking about Catholic, for example. Let me just pick on Catholic. Yeah. You cannot be a Catholic priest if you're not undergone uh, thorough, thorough training, thorough training uh -huh. and scrutiny. But un unfortunately in Islam, mm -hmm. you can go to a country, an Arabian country, yeah. Sudan, Saudi, Kuwait, uh -huh. become a driver. Uh -huh. You be a chauffeur or driver, <laughs> yeah. you know Arabic. When you come back to Kenya, wallah, it happens. You start telling people you are chef. And because you speak Arabic, you confuse Fatma, you confuse Abdul Razak. I call upon Kenyans to start asking sheikhs, kindly tell us your educational background. Uh -huh. It's important. Let us, let us know where someone has studied. Mm -hmm. It is not an insult. You, you should know, for example, someone, for example, myself, yeah. I studied for eight years in Mamburui, mm -hmm. studying religion. I became an imam. Then I took a first degree at University of Nairobi. Yeah. I took master's at University of Nairobi. I took a PhD at University of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. And all of them are in education, in uh, religion and everything. Then in PhD, it was uh, religion and leadership. Uh -huh. And I'm now taking law. Uh -huh. So what I'm trying to say, I'm not trying to say that it, it is wrong to follow some sheikhs, but it is important you know your sheikh, where is his education level, uh -huh. so that when your sheikh is competing with another sheikh somewhere, uh -huh. then you can also have guidance that, hey, but why should someone with a PhD be arguing with someone who has, don't have even a diploma, who among the two might be right? Uh -huh. Of course, you'll be sure, 90% or 80, that the one with a PhD, uh -huh might lead me to a better place than, than the one the who don't have any certificate. Uh -huh. But let me tell you something, Sheikh. Yes. Uh, the Sheikh, they don't appoint themselves. 
there is a committee of people uh -huh. that sit down and appoint them. Uh -huh. So for me, I wouldn't blame the chair for misleading people. Mm. It's these people that appoint the chair to this position. Ah, yes. I'll, I'll tell also, you, Fatma, let me cut you short, Fatma, I to you. I was a sheikh, yeah. and I'm so sorry to tell you, many mosques in Kenya, get it from me, are not led by committees who know religion. Take it right. Go and do your research. Many mosques want a committee member who mm. has money so that when you ask for water bill, the person will pay. Uh -huh. You ask for salary for the imam, they will pay. You ask for electricity, they will pay. Many of most committees are not learned people because I have been under committee three times. And that's why we began an association by the name Al-Wahda Muslim Teachers Association. I was the founder to just try to assist our sheikhs so that they don't fall prey to those committees. And we have succeeded by some extent. So that is why we need people like in the committee. Yes. People like you to help assign good sheikh. That yes. can be, you know, as Muslim, like uh, we don't just sleep and wake up and say tomorrow we pray in. Mm. We depend on Islamic registration. Mm. We depend on our Muslim leaders yes. to come and take. Because the same mm. people asking, like, they, they ask me, Fatma, when are you praying? Mm. I tell them, oh, let's wait for the share to mm. announce, or maybe mm. just listen to Islamic radio station, because mm. we depend on these people. Yes. When these people say, tomorrow we're going to pray Eid, mm. that is when we're going to pray Eid. Mm. So for me, I'll never blame the people. Mm. I'll blame the committee mm. that <laughs> assigned the share, because this share, they're the one that lead us. We mm. follow them. Before exactly. we go to my brother, uh, Abdul Razak, I'll I tell you why a committee member is important to have a scholar. Now, before, I before, sit, before, mm -hmm. before uh -huh. I sit in the committee of Imtiaz Ali Mosque. Yeah. The sheikh there has a degree. His deputy has, both of them have master's degree. The imams of Imtiaz Ali Mashallah. and uh, this one. Uh -huh. We go to South B Mosque. I'm a committee member there. The sheikh has a PhD. Uh, I'm, I'm a committee member of current mosque. You see, I think you try to get what I'm saying. Yeah. When you have a learned people in a committee, they always make sure that the, the person leading the mosque is learned and also make sure that the life of those people is in good order. That's why all of them, I don't want to say, but they are in very good order. The cars they drive, the house they live in, where the children go to school. Then that's why that's what we want to tell Kenyans to make sure that all mosques are led by learned people. Uh -huh. And, and knowledge is very important That's because true. before you do something, you must know what you're doing and what you're achieving That's with it. True. We will come back to discuss more of this. And actually, there is Sita Tushawal, and I've got a very important question for the two of you. Yes. And I'll give you the answer much later. Don't go away. We're going on a very brief break here on Nasheed. But when we come back, we will be talking about Sita Tushawal or in English, the six days of the month of Shawal, which follows the month of Ramadan. We'll be right back. Don't touch the dial.